Welcome back to Mock the Mock, where we take a look at someone else's mock draft, and I'm Mock, and giving my views, thoughts, and opinions. I got a great one for you. We're going to travel to ESPN, because Jordan Reed put out a two-round mock draft. He does such great work over there at ESPN, so give him a shout-out. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to go see the mock draft for yourself. I've yet to look at it. I don't know if there's trades involved, so I'm really excited. Let's go ahead and get into this sucker. I imagine... Pick one is yes, no trade needed here as Caleb Williams is the first overall pick. I think now largely, if not 95% of people tend to agree that the Bears are going to be going with Caleb Williams. I remember midseason when there was all that fuss and honestly up through the end of the season, like Bears fans, Fields fans just what? accept this pick it's just kind of wild and that's not a shot to take at them like i get it like justin fields kind of made it a tough decision but you just go to hey he's a more toolsy prospect than fields we get to reset the quarterback contract and let's see what we can get for fields in a trade i don't know if that trade's going to happen in this mock but now everyone seems to be on board with this let's see what goes on at two if we're going to see jay and daniels or drake may and the commanders take drake may man i just had i i just put out my own mock draft right uh a couple of days ago and golly people there, there were people mad about drake may at two like oh man everybody in their and their mom is saying Jaden daniels is going to the commanders and here we are now in like back-to-back -back mock drafts like first name brugler and then jordan reed two very very good sources saying it could it for them right now it's likely to be drake may so like just open up your mind to it i don't think the commanders have made a decision on who they want at quarterback uh they, they, we still got pro days the team the team still got to sit down with interviews with both these guys the decision's not made so i wouldn't complain if it's drake may or jane daniels as of this moment but now this is where the draft may start, depending on if we see quarterback, if we see wide receiver, or if we see a trade. What does he got the Patriots doing? Is he's going quarterback. He's going to go with Jaden Daniels to the Patriots. So we see three quarterbacks off of the board. And uh, yeah, I mean, the Patriots, their answer is not on the roster right now. If they want to take a shot on a quarterback, they sure they sure can. They, sure, they, they can just... Kind of be like, okay, whoever it is, Drake May, Jaden Daniels here at quarterback three. We'll go ahead and take him. Maybe J.J. McCarthy. I know people are already fed up with the J.J. McCarthy hype in the top 10. I get it. I get it. But I think if you get in a situation where you don't have to start him right away, you could sit him. Maybe the Patriots. Uh, you just stick with Mac Jones for another year. And you have him be the starter. You bring in like a Jacoby Brissett, who's very familiar with at least – most of the coaches right now currently on the staff you get to have him start the year and uh, have jj learn behind him i'm just saying it's an option that maybe we should think of gojo 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 don't like the uh, jj mccarthy talk he's already done with all right we got pick four i imagine it's marvin harrison jr it is marvin harrison jr cardinals probably take the top uh, if they don't trade out of this pick take the top prospect in this class uh, I would say not, top non-quarterback prospect, Marvin Harrison is just so stinking good. Oh, we do have trades, and it's a projected trade. The Bears, this is the second mock draft in a row that I've covered uh, the last two days, him and Nate Brugler, that I've had the Bears trading up to pick five, and I imagine this is Malik Neighbors or Roma Dunze. Let's see who it is. It's Malik Neighbors going to the Bears. I mean, I love the idea of the Bears snagging a wide receiver to pair up with DJ Moore for Caleb Williams, their new franchise quarterback. I love that idea. It's just I don't like the I don't like in a draft this talented at honestly positions that you really need on the roster being offensive line and wide receiver. I don't like the idea of them giving away draft capital to make that move. I just don't. I say maybe. maybe Maybe just sit back at pick. Pick are they? Uh, pick nine, and just see how the board falls. I think I'd be more willing to do that, but I'm not against it. Uh, the Giants they go with Roma Dunze, so 
he essentially becomes better Darius Slayton in this uh in 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 this scenario to pair up with Jalen Hyatt to pair up with Wandale uh Wandale Robinson so we we've now seen through quarterbacks we have seen three wide receivers and I imagine the offensive uh I, I imagine offense is still coming off the board as the Titans are the next on the board and will take tackle as they do they take Joe Alt their tackle was pretty pee pee poo poo last season so they make uh they go ahead and snag the top tackle in this class pick eight is this traded is this quarterback is this the first defensive player off the board for the Falcons it's the first defensive player it's Dallas Turner it makes a ton of sense this is a team that really has no top tier pass rusher and have just really struggled to get to the quarterback the last couple of years so Dallas Turner fine fit good uh he, he had a really good combine just ran real fast came in at 247 so he's above that 245 threshold uh great length now we're going to pick nine with the Chargers. Before we get there, if you want to know more about some of the prospects in this draft class, I got a draft guide that will do just that. Listen, I know you love the NFL draft as much as I do, and you're going to want a nice hefty watch list of players during this college football season. Well, go ahead, check out my draft guide. You can purchase it for only 30 bucks by Venmoing or PayPaling me. Links in the description. It's a one-time payment and you get it for this whole draft cycle and forever and always, technically. It's a Google spreadsheet, so send me your email when you send the payment. I'll get you hooked up. You will see my current prospect rankings and big board, my full evals. And guess what? It updates throughout the whole draft cycle so it's a great purchase and it's a great way to support the channel pick nine chargers go with brock bauer so they trade down grab assets in this class and in future draft class next year's and they grab brock bauer this is great value like brock Bowers, i think is worth the top 10 pick it's just the question is who is gonna who is gonna pull the trigger on tight end knowing you know it, it's not a necessarily a valuable position that you'd want to spend a top 10 pick on seeing the success of tight ends in this league that have come on day two sam laporta travis kelsey uh mark andrews uh, i'm sure there's many names i am currently forgetting i mean uh shoot we got uh uh trey mcbride and no, no one like you could get that top tier value you could get that top guy uh just later on but brock powers can be that if you choose to utilize them as such i mean you, you got gerald everett as a free agent so i mean this makes sense I, I this is a easier pill to swallow in a trade down with the chargers i wouldn't want to take him fifth overall i'm just saying that pick 10 the jets they go olu Fashanu, so he's still ot2 in this case, I had him fall in, in my own mock draft just because the tackle class feels real bloated. It feels like there's just a lot of good options there. Uh, but you, you get a really good player in here in Fashanyu. And he will be able to test out in on his uh, pro day, which will be nice to see uh, like the uh, three cone and uh, the uh, the shuttle time with that. Minnesota Vikings take J.J. McCarthy. Uh, obviously, we don't know if free agent Kirk Cousins will return, but McCarthy's fit fits Kevin O'Connell's scheme so well. I mean, I do like the fit there, and I do like not trading up for him. But as of right now, man, J.J. McCarthy in a lot of mocks is going top 12 or higher. He's, he's going either pick 12 or higher. And... This could be all smoke and mirrors. This could be a Will Levis situation where he falls uh, to the back end of the first round. I know people will be like, Will Levis made it to the second round. But it's like, hey, 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 hey. Titans were trying to trade back into the first round to select Will Levis. So as far as I'm concerned, Will Levis was a back end of the first round uh, talent, or at least that's where the league saw him at. So I think J.J. McCarthy, if this is a, all smoke and mirrors, he's still probably going into the first round, just maybe more of a mid to late first round pick oh 
Yay, pick 12. That's the Denver Broncos. All the quarterbacks are off the board. What are you going to do? It's Jared versus. They're going to go edge. I think that's fine. This is a team that, uh, honestly, they don't have a really good run defender at, on the edge. And getting a little bit more size ain't a bad option. It really isn't. And, I mean, you get one of the most powerful edge defenders in this class as well. I think you had, what, 31 on the bench? Las Vegas Raiders, they're going to be taking Byron Murphy. One of my favorite landing spots for Byron Murphy because I think he probably goes top 15 or there's a chance he goes top 15. Tested out really well uh, this past week at the Combine. Did come in a little smaller than you'd like, but he probably plays at like 305, 306. But he came in uh, to run a little lighter. Uh, was like 297. Uh, I don't think that'll be his playing weight. I think it's fine. It is what it is, but he gives you that that penetration that you are gonna honestly going to be missing with like adam butler who was very good for them this past season if they don't elect to bring him back jerry tillery that is your other interior guy so yeah you kind of need upgrades there on the interior and byron murphy will be that pick 14 new orleans saints go with telenisa fuaga yep that's a good pick i like it i actually like troy fatsanu just because I feel like the left side of the line is kind of the dire need. You don't know if Ryan Ramshack will be back, but he, if he is, then you're you're looking at that left tackle, left guard situation. For me, Troy Fatsun, who is probably a better fit than Fuaga, who's mainly played on at, at right tackle his whole career with a few spot starts at uh, uh, right guard. But I think for the most... For the most, people are kind of on board with tackle for the Saints. Uh, this could be corner. Uh, if they move Marshawn Lattimore, this could be edge as they, they need to get younger, more talented at that position. Indianapolis Colts go with Terry and Arnold. Terry and Arnold largely being talked about as a top 15 prospect. I think he probably goes in the top 15. Uh, I I like him as top 20. So, I mean, him coming at, going at 15 isn't out of the realm of possibility be a good fit for gus bradley you're going to be pairing him up with juju brent hopefully they can bring back like a kenny moore but even if they don't taryn arnold has that slot versatility to play pick 16 seattle seahawks go darius robinson this is a, this is the highest i've seen him go wow 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 i i don't necessarily like this pick for the seahawks uh, I know they got a lot of interior players that are free agents, uh, but this is a team. They got players at edge. Granted, you could probably upgrade. I don't think they really have a superstar at the edge position, but is Robinson that guy? He tested kind of slow, but you'd be like, oh, but he's like 285. It, it, him testing slow is fine, but it's like still you anticipate him to test out a little bit faster. I mean, his testing uh, range was within like a Mike Morris who fell a lot in the draft, I think we ended up going to the fifth round after being talked about as a day two guy. But uh, yeah, a little, a little shocked with the Darius Robinson selection here. Ooh, Jacksonville Jaguars. This is Quinion, right? This is Quinion Mitchell. Yep, that's a good fit for uh, Ryan Nielsen's defense. I think guard, wide receiver are the two positions in play here for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mitchell, I, I think for me, is going to be probably corner one. He has just had such a phenomenal offseason draft process. Just looked great. It was probably the best player at the Senior Bowl and then just came out and tested exceptionally well at the Combine. Cincinnati Bengals take JC Latham. Hey, man, tackle. Tackle, tackle, tackle. The value is there. Go ahead, send it, get it. I like it. I like it quite a bit. Go ahead, get that right tackle of the future uh latham looked good in drills man whether you project him as guard or uh tackle i i think it works either way especially for uh this squad that just you need to protect joe burrow you desperately need to protect joe burrow let me give a quick shout out to underdog fantasy when you sign up you use in promo code bro schmo at underdog fantasy they match that first deposit up to a hundred a dollary a dues. I know the football season's over, but they don't just do football. They do basketball, uh, baseball. They've done golf. They do esports. They do all kinds of sports. Whether you like weekly best ball or pickums, higher or lower on player prop bets, 
underdog. They got you covered. They were just doing last week a slower, faster on combine times. And I made a killing. But remember, if you do sign up, use promo code BROSHMO and they will match that first deposit up to a hundred a dollar dues. But please bet bet smartly, bet wisely, bet responsibly, bet within your means. Pick 19, Los Angeles Rams go with Nate Wiggins. Now, this is the thing with the Rams. They're either big and slow at corner or they're small and fast. And this would make this is just another pick where it's like it's small and fast. Do I, uh, A. Wiggins, dude's 20. He's the youngest corner in this class. So, yeah, he could put on the weight. I'm not too worried about that. 173, though, was real light. I didn't like seeing him at that size. Not a lot of corners are able to compete in the NFL at that 270 uh, size. So, you already feel like you're kind of betting against the grain, though, corner is a position, the Rams. Uh, probably could address here at that pick 19. I just don't know if Wiggins uh, would be the guy I would be looking at. Then again, I mean, th this is a defense that they don't mind sacrificing a little bit size at corner as like we've seen guys like Darius Robinson have, very, have a lot of success on the outside. Darius Robinson, Darius Williams. There we go. Pick 20, Pittsburgh Steelers. They're going with Amarius Mims. They're pairing up the uh, former Georgia tackles. I imagine Mims will be now uh, right tackle. Bradford Jones moved to the left side. And you, you just want to get better, better players there at on the offensive line. Get that offensive line to be feared once again like it used to be in Pittsburgh. So good pick here. Let's see what the Dolphins do. As they go Jackson Powers Johnson. I love this pick. I think the more valuable pick is definitely tackle for the Dolphins, but you're getting a really good player in Jackson Powers Johnson with, I mean, the guys, your whole interior are free agents, Isaiah Wynn, Connor Williams, Robert Hunt. They might be able to bring back maybe like a Connor Williams who's coming off an ACL, which isn't great, but he's a really good player. You could probably get him at a good value. Uh, so it might be more ideal to go with like a Troy Fatanu who will be... The heir apparent at left tackle, but could start at left guard early on. But uh, like I, I like the pick. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to be mad about Jackson Power Shots, and he's one of my favorite players in this class. Philadelphia Eagles. They go Tyler Guyton. So Eagles. They tend to tend to do what we least expect. I know everyone and their mom saying corner, but I think tackle is definitely in the realm of possibility. Tyler Guyton, uh, someone like that, could definitely be uh up for grabs there for the eagles as they are apparent to lane johnson remember this is a team that likes to draft uh in terms of address a need before it becomes a need or keep it a straight the strength however you want to word it that the, that's typically their draft philosophy so tyler guided I, th I think would be a good good addition as he wouldn't have to start early so he would have to start a couple of games because lane johnson does miss time all right, pick 23, Liatu Latu, Houston Texans. Man, every one of their mom is taking Liatu Latu, the Texans. And Texas fans are just probably going to be livid. Now, Jonathan Grenard, free agent. I think it's very likely he probably gets re-signed. Even Derek Barnett, who was really good down the stretch for the Texans. One of those two guys, I think, re-signs. Miko Ryan is a guy that really loves depth along the defensive line, though. Liatu Latu would give him that depth. Uh... He is a top 20 player. So you're getting a really good value here. So I'm just saying, Texas fans, until free agency happens, just say, okay, yeah, this is something that could happen. So patience. Dallas Cowboys, they go with Troy Fatanu. This is a great scenario for the Cowboys. Like, honestly, this tackle class just continuing to get deeper and deeper really benefits the Cowboys as... Tyrone Smith is unlikely to come back to Dallas. So you're going to be looking at the left tackle position. Like, yeah, we need to do something about that. Troy Fatsunu allows you to do something about it. Pick to one of five. It's Cooper DeGene. It's Cooper DeGene because he is the best pick that the Packers could make at this juncture. He won't be able to participate, not necessarily even in his pro day, but at a separate like workout. So uh, somewhere down like prior to the draft, 
uh, as he's recovering from a broken leg. But we already know he's a really good athlete. He brings uh, just rare size at the corner position. I think he, I definitely think he's a guy that can play, uh, that can be a star in an outside corner. But he also gives you nickel and safety versatility. And safety is a position that is, well, Packers got a lot of free agents there. Pick 26. Tampa Bay Buccaneers go with Chop Robinson. They did recently just release uh, Shaquille Barrett. They saw good things from Yaya Diaby down the stretch. Uh, Joe Tryon was pretty pretty good in a rotation role. So maybe just grab a more edge talent so you could have a deep rotation there. Ain't a bad option. They did just re-sign Evan, uh, Mike Evans. So not saying wide receiver is out of the realm of possibility, but... It is now a little bit on more on the back burner compared to maybe like interior offensive line and edge. 27, that's the Cardinals. They're going to be going with Kool-Aid McKintree. I'm so glad he, I'm so happy to see him get first round hype. He was unable to participate at the combine because he discovered a Jones fracture in his foot. He won't be getting surgery until after the pro day but he'll be ready by training camp so he's going to be participating at his pro day with the injury so you got to keep that in mind when it comes to his testing but his freaking tape is great i think it's among the top in this class i i hate that he's kind of a forgotten player in this class because he's just so stinking good buffalo bills they go Adonai Mitchell. So Brian Thomas still on the board here. I actually would have liked Thomas here. I have Thomas higher than Mitchell. But Mitchell by no means is a bad selection here. Both guys would give the Bills that vertical speedster that could tear the top off of defenses. Uh, so like really, I think the Bills, if they want a receiver at this juncture, there is no wrong pick. Uh, did I miss Brian Thomas? I'm pretty sure I did. I'm pretty sure he's still on the board. Johnny Newton going to the Lions. I like this pickup, but I mean, this is the thing, man. Ali McNeil kind of already fills that role. Like, they say Ali McNeil primarily plays one tech, but I mean, they had him shed weight, and he's been playing more of a three tech role, or at least he did last year. So I think they would be looking for the more meaty guy in the interior if they really wanted to address the interior, and, and Johnny Newton just ain't that. I am kind of curious with like the rumors that most of the NFL sees him as a early to mid second round pick just because of the lack of size. But then you talk about Byron Murphy, who came in uh, weighing less than Jason Newton, though he did have the better year, though by not much. I mean, like him and Johnny Newton were like neck and neck when it comes to pressures among the interior, win rate among the interior. So, but they're both two. There are two guys that are going to be utilizing very similar roles. I just don't think this is the role the Lions would be looking for. Good player, nonetheless. Baltimore Ravens, Brian Thomas. Hey, don't, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. And this is a gift. Brian Thomas would be utterly just a phenomenal pickup. OBJ, free agent. You get to replace him with another speedy threat that has got some size to him that offers that after the catch ability. I really love the pickup. I think it's really solid. I don't think it's really going to happen, but good players do fall in the draft. So never say never. San Francisco 49ers. And it's Rake Straw. Still in the first round for uh, Jordan Reed. I mean, yeah, I like, uh, I like getting a player opposite of Tavarius Ward. You got good depth there with Diamondor Lenoir. I mean, people got bad when I said he was, he could be a high high end rotation player. Like, I just think you could upgrade the corner two position and Lenoir, it just provides a lot of versatility, not even, just a lot of depth. And you just, at the quarterback position where it's just so volatile, you want to keep adding depth, competition, and talent to it. Uh, a little high for Rakestraw for me, but it is what it is. Then Xavier Worthy, everyone and their mom has, after his combine, made the selection <laughs> to the Chiefs just because it's fun. Uh, Xavier Worthy is kind of the name coming out after setting a record, a uh, combine record, 4 2 1 40. 
Tyreek Hill, they're missing that that type of speed, tear the top off the defense. So yeah, we're these kind of the the obvious player to kind of like put in mock drafts right now if you're doing a little predictive. Uh, I think Worthy probably is a better like early to mid second round pick, top 50 type prospect. Uh, but he should be talked about here as one of the guys in the run in at the back end of the first round if uh, a team like Kansas City is looking for a receiver. But you also got to talk about like Keon Coleman, um, Ladd McConkey, and such. So let's go ahead and get this second round started real quick. What's crack a lacking? It's your boy Baroshmo, just in case you did not know. So go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content. As always, let me know what you think in the comment section below where we have that nice, beautiful football discourse. Keon Coleman going to the Panthers. Now, is he a separator down to down? Uh, maybe the most ideal separator. Didn't run fast, but his gauntlet was, yeah, the fastest gauntlet of anybody. The only player to get up to 20 miles an hour. So you love to see that. So you know he's capable of being a separator. The thing is, you just got kind of got to like iron out some of his route running and whatnot. He's just not the most polished and nuanced route runner in that regard. So it is, would the Panthers be looking probably for a more consistent separator? So we're talking like Lad McConkey, Ricky Persaw. Uh, would they be looking for that over a Keon Coleman? New England Patriots, they go with Jordan Morgan. Uh, they can play guard, but you're probably drafted to play tackle, left tackle, and particularly with Trent Brown as a free agent. So solid pickup. Arizona Cardinals go Keesley, Sumatea. Uh, he could play right or left tackle. He's played both sides. Get another tackle there to play next to Paris Johnson. Could, could be real clutch with DJ Humphreys uh, with the late season ACL tear. Could also be a cap casualty. That remains to be seen. So uh, we'll find out more as free agency begins. We've got the commanders going with Graham Barton. I think they need a tackle more than they need a guard center. They did cut Nick Gates. So they could be they could be in the center market if that's what they want. I mean, yeah, go right ahead. I think you could also go edge here if you're the commanders. Let's keep going. Chargers, they go Kamari Lassiter. Uh, if I'm the Chargers, I want to get a little bit more size at corner. But you're getting one hell of a corner, too. Like, Kamari Lasseter, I mean, he got up to, like, I think, what, 186, 190? I don't remember what he actually weighed in at the combine. But uh, the dude is one of the most technically sound corners in this class. Like, don't sleep on Lasseter. Does he tight ends? They go with Lad McConkey. So, essentially, an upgrade over Kyle Phillips, who just can't even stay healthy. But getting more receiving help and a guy that has that speed to tear the top off of defenses uh, is a down-to-down -down separator, which is something they are sorely missing there in the receiving core. Pick 39, Giants go with Bo Nix, quarterback of the future. I love Bo Nix. I'm a big fan. I'd be willing to take Bo Nix in the first round. You get him in the second round, someone who could immediately come in and compete with Daniel Jones for that starting job. So I, I like that. It gives you an escape valve, an escape plan, a panic button if Daniel Jones looks like what he did this past season. Pick 40, Commanders, they go with Adisa Isaac. Isaac's fine. Uh, did test fast, but like, I mean, he did test fast. It was like 474, but like not as fast as I expected. But he has strong senior bowl, looked good as a run defender. They do need to add some add some uh, edge depth i mean i'm sure they're gonna be very active during free agency but but they're gonna they're gonna have to add more guys uh there after essentially shedding both montez sweat and chase young uh prior to the trade deadline this past season big 41 packers go with edrin cooper first linebacker off the board so this is like the heir apparent to uh devondre campbell uh, this allows them to get cheaper because Campbell does have a higher price contract there in the linebacker position. So, yeah, good pickup. I think Cooper could maybe even go higher than this. Minnesota Vikings, they go Chris Jenkins. Not the sexiest pick, but it's an interior pick. It's a solid pick. Someone who uh, tested really well. Very technically sound. Very good run defender uh, that you're just... Who, who, who made strides as a pass 
rusher, but wasn't anything incredible in that regard. Atlanta Falcons go with Xavier Leggett. I, I truly believe that if you make this selection, it's like, yeah, we're getting Kirk Cousins. So let's go ahead. Let's get some speed. You get Xavier Leggett, who's not the most nuanced route runner. So, I mean, luckily, there's some of those guys later on in the draft you want to add, like maybe uh, Malik Washington or, or such, that could kind of win underneath and just be really good separators in the shorts intermediate. But Leggett gives you this guy that can tear the top off of defense with 4.39 speed and is very good contested catcher. And the Raiders, they go with Michael Penix. So now we have all the top quarterbacks off the board. This feels like a good landing spot in the second round for Penix. Uh, you can get him to uh, be come in there and immediately compete with Aiden O'Connell. New Orleans Saints take Chris Braswell. They get that edge player. This is why I think the Saints should go tackle early in the draft because there's going to be some good edge players here early or in the early to mid second round. Chris Braswell happens to be one of them. Oh, no Marshawn Nealon yet. I'm curious where he may go. Uh, Colts take Roman Wilson. Not exactly the pick I would want to make. This is essentially Josh Downs. This is, this is what Josh Downs brings to the Colts. I'd be looking for, though I would say Downs is better on the short term immediate while Roman Wilson's better vertically. But I want to look for that guy that could probably play on the outside consistently. That's just my take. New York Giants, they go Braden Fisk. Braden Fisk largely talked about it as a second round pick at this juncture. Uh, I don't think he'll be that high when it comes to my big board. Uh, but I mean, dude's a penetrator. You're going to be pairing him up with Dexter Lawrence. So already starting with a leg up there. So you, you get a guy that uh, very good get off. Can go and get after it. Comes uh plays with a lot a lot of gusto, a lot of a lot of a lot of feistiness. Jacksonville Jaguars go with Dominic Pooney. Uh Pooney immediately come in there and play guard. Uh he's shown that he could potentially play center, a dude that played left tackle this past year for Kansas, though he's largely a guard prospect. Uh I like Pooney. I think there's some probably better guard options I would take on the board here. Uh, you got like Christian Haynes. I think uh, honestly, Chris, uh, Christian Mahogany or uh, Cooper BB might be better options there. But like Pooty's not far off. Dio Johnson going to the Bengals. So this is the second tight end we have off the board. The first one after Brock Bowers. And I get it, Johnson. He tests out exceptionally well. Everyone and their mom is going to be like, man, maybe we could turn turn, turn those tools and physical and athletic traits into actual potential because it never really translated to production, I should say. Never translated to production for the Nittany Lions. So a little earlier than I'd probably be willing to take him, but... We saw tight ends go pretty early last year and like Brendan Strange and Luke Schoonmaker, Goonmaker. Uh, Junior Colson going to the Eagles. This is actually the type of linebacker they kind of need. Uh, though you would probably want a little bit of coverage ability there because I don't think like N'Kobe Dean's really bringing in that. Uh, but he's also, N'Kobe Dean's not a guy that's going to be someone in there that can take on blocks. You want someone that can kind of open that up. And Junior Colson is that guy. It's for Steelers. Zach Frazier, phenomenal pick. They released Mason Cole. They just continue to address the offensive line. Rams, they go Marshawn Nealon, man. Pick was too good at this point. Marshawn Nealon, I think, is a sneaky sleeper to sneak into the first round. Phenomenal combine, especially in the agility drills. Just didn't expect it from Marshawn Nealon. So now you're going to prepare it all Byron Young. I really like that quite a bit. And then the Eagles are back up here. They're going Tyler Newbin. Not really a stellar safety class, but it looks pretty solid on day two. There's some guys there that I really like. And Newbin probably being the top guy you want to get in. If he's available here at 53, I think, hey, go ahead and send it. I mean, you already released Kevin Bayard. Uh, you got Reed Blankenship, Sidney Brown, unfortunately, again, late season ACL injury. You don't really know what you have in him. So, yeah, just keep adding. 
talent to the position. Cleveland Browns, their first pick ends up being Malachi Corley. Uh, I assume you're just looking for a better option than Elijah Moore, who is just very flaky. Like, he would have some really good games, and then he would just disappear for a couple of games. Uh, Corley, he gives you some really good after-the-catch ability. Built like a run back at like 5'10", 215 too. Miami Dolphins this is their second pick, and they're going Jatavion Sanders. This is, uh, for a lot of people, tight end two. Didn't really test out exceptionally well, but, I mean, you know he's much faster on tape than what he ran at the Combine. Uh, a, mu a much improved run blocker. Uh, this would be a good, pit, good fit for the Dolphins, honestly. Dallas Cowboys, they go with Trey Benson. Trey Benson, I think he could go top 50. He had a stellar combine i think he is undisputedly running back one in this class i'm a huge fan i know this i know this past season wasn't nearly as impressive as his 2022 but again a dude that was kind of just stuck in the rotation there with florida state which is stupid but the cowboys are a team that are going to be looking at the running back position on day two with tony pollard heading to free agency also uh rico doddle Headed to free agency. Uh, a lot of people have kind of pinned uh, Jonathan Brooks there because his Jonathan Brooks, the people that performed his surgery, uh, were, well, Dallas's medical staff. So they kind of have the best insight when it comes to w when he should return. Tampa Bay Buccaneers go with Troy Franklin. This is actually good range for Troy Franklin. Uh, it gives them a good vertical threat, even though they did re sign Mike Evans, like I said. Wide receiver just gets kind of moved to the back burner, but still a position you could probably add more talent at. You saw good things from uh, Trey Palmer uh, this past season. So, like, I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe you try to get more, a little more inexpensive with Chris Godwin being just inconsistent and just unable to stay, like, fully healthy, though Godwin has had like what back-to-back -back thousand yard seasons but not Green Bay Packers they go with Jonathan Brooks another team that's kind of easy to tab that they go running back somewhere on day two whether it's third second or third round Brooks uh would be kind of the heir apparent there to Aaron Jones so I kind of like that man and I, I I think this is a position the Packers can still double dip at whether it's in the third or fourth round with one of the bruiser types in like Audric Estime or Braylon Allen. Houston Texans, they go corner TJ Tampa. They do have Steve Nelson, Desmond Keene, and Javier uh, Thomas as free agents. You want to pair Derek Steenley with another top talent. TJ Tampa is that. He's a guy that's going to be probably inside my top 40. Just has length. I love it. Uh, Devondre Sweat really falling down board here but this is a good pickup for the buffalo bills it happens they don't really have that meat in the middle and he gives them that meat he gives them a really good run stuff for a guy that could just create those pileups so this is a really good value for the bills cam hart look at him he's in the second round here for the detroit lions the detroit lions desperately need a corner luckily corner class is really good so they're gonna have some options on day two if they don't go with it on day one Baltimore Ravens, they get Cooper BB, who I mentioned a little bit earlier. They they need that left guard. Don Simpson is a free agent. Uh, Kevin Zeitler, I imagine, gets brought back. But uh, they don't have anyone at left guard. BB would be able to come in and at least compete early on for that. San Francisco 49ers go with Patrick Paul. So this is kind of your tackle of the future. They went with Ennis Rakestraw. So Patrick Paul might, might not be a guy that can start immediately, like, here it's talking about finding competition for Colts, uh, Colts and McKivitts, but I don't know if I'd want to, like, I feel like Paul, I feel like it wouldn't be gr a great rookie year from Paul. He had to start right away, but someone that definitely has the tools. And then the final pick here for the Chiefs is Michael Hall Jr. Big fan of Michael Hall Jr. You get that interior player. Doesn't quite have the size the girth of a Chris Jones, but I mean, even if they bring, bring back Chris Jones, which they likely will, 
you could definitely use some guys next to him. I think they have a lot of free agents there on the defensive interior. So addressing it here in round two would be nice. I think Ruka Rohiro would probably be uh, a better player uh, if uh, to probably select here. But Michael Hall is really good in his own right. He's not far off. It's just you're dealing with a little bit more size with uh, size and traits when it comes to Ruka Rohiro. But Wow, man, that's the two round mock draft. If you want more draft content, I released a mock draft earlier this week and I also got free agent content on the channel. So go ahead, check that out. But until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.